Hey, welcome home, everybody. Grab yourself a drink, settle down, and this time, let's dive into the language tools we've used along our learning journey. Hey, welcome home, everybody. Grab yourself a drink, settle down, as today we're discussing language learning tools and what we think of them. Now, if you haven't seen our Learning German in Germany video, you might want to consider checking it out. I consider this a spiritual sequel. It's not really required viewing, but it does lay out our language learning journey ever since we decided to move to Munich up until now. So. It's pretty helpful, and if you like this, you might like that. For this video, what I want to get into is a little bit more of the nitty gritty, the tools we used along the way, and honestly, why we chose them and what we think of them. And though I'm not going to be ranking them, I'm not going to be rating them, I'm not going to be pitting them against each other, you might be able to draw some conclusions based off of what kind of learner you are and where you are in your journey, and maybe get some inspiration for which apps might help you. And of course, this is definitely going to be in a learning German perspective, but all the tools we're discussing today, they're available in all sorts of languages. So I'm pretty sure even if German isn't your bag, you're going to be able to find this useful as well. Now, without further ado, let's get into kind of the first major tool we used when we got serious about learning a language, and that's Chatterbug. So why don't you take it away, as I think you've got the most experience with it. Yeah, so I think Chatterbug was the first tool mm -hmm. that I used in our language learning journey. So basically, it is an online web app. It has two parts. One part is this sort of like online, very generic sort of test sort of situation mm -hmm. where you're inputting stuff and self-studying. Another part of it is online lessons with a native speaker where you sort of practice that input that you've been doing right. all week. Sort of a one-stop shop for your whole language learning needs. Yeah, exactly. So I found out about this because before coming to Germany, I really wanted to have a good foot in the door with the language. I wanted to have the beginning level sort of cleared so that I could keep uh, practicing with the locals, have a nice solid base before we came here. So I was looking into how to do this and I discovered this Suffer system, which mm -hmm. we've talked about before in previous videos. Please go watch. But in a nutshell, the Suffer system is this system that European countries use to gauge where the language learners are in their language journey. So it's very objective. When you're at such and such level, you can do X, Y, and Z in that Super language. Skills. Based. Mm -hmm, exactly. And so as I was learning all about this, discovering how I would go about my language journey, I learned about Chatterbug because it uses the Suffer mm -hmm. system, which I find very helpful. Anytime you have an online learning situation that is also pegged to the Suffer system, yeah. that's a really good sign. Well, any tool in general from books to classes to teachers to your online things, yeah. anything that uses the Suffer system, that's a leg up. Yeah, so for me personally, I did. I really enjoyed using Chatterbug. I feel like I got a lot out of it. Mm -hmm. I was able to go through the beginning levels and get a certificate in those beginning levels, the type that you would show to an, a prospective employer or to a university. Yep. And I think that was because their online input system is excellent. <laughs> it's brutal. Yeah, brutal. That's a better way to say it. So in if you've used these sort of online apps or mm -hmm. web apps or whatever, you'll know a lot of the times they'll sort of show a word in English and you have to provide the word in German. Right. If you do a good job, it checks it off and you can move to the next right. one. Classic translation mm -hmm. test. But a lot of the language learning apps that are quite popular gamify this sort of process to a point where I think it's a little too easy. Like yeah. they'll have you like play games where you're like doing a crossword puzzle or like running your finger through a maze or popping bubbles and yeah. sort of you can figure out the answer if you didn't already know it. So right, you're it's not like a puzzle. Yeah, you're not really having to challenge yourself and learn. Whereas Chatterbug, you have to type the word out letter by letter by letter. And if anything's wrong, it's wrong and yeah. it goes to the bottom of the SRS pile. Even the article, Der Dier Das, and you Super have to important. like capitalize the nouns every time, it's legit. So it was really helpful for me in the beginning levels, especially since I was learning German from afar before yeah. coming to Germany. And I think it's really good for somebody like me who likes being in school, likes a very like clear regimented system. All I have to do is sit down and do it, which I'm good at making myself <laughs> do. But that's not really the case for you. No, so I used the same system and I respect Chatterbug for all of the reasons that you've said, but my problem with the system was the one-stop shop nature. I'm the, well, I was gonna say I'm the kind of learner that appreciates flexibility, and that's true, but I'm also just kind of bad at school. I don't like the rigidity, I bulk at it sometimes. I'll log on to Chatterbug and it's like, oh, time to do this, and I'm just like, no, not today. <laughs> today I want to do something else. And so I really do require that flexibility. You need to know what kind of learner you are and you just need to roll with it. And I like to mix and match lots of different kind of different pieces of software, different tools and all that good stuff. So for that reason, because Chatterbook can also be kind of expensive, 
I had difficulty with that tool because it wants you to funnel all of your language learning through it. And I think when you are learning a language, making a bet on just one tool is not for me. I think having lots of different tools and that's mix and matching their strengths and weaknesses, that's really important. So though I definitely respect Chatterbug, it does have drawbacks. Yeah, definitely. I think that's a really good segue for our next language learning tool that we've been doing currently, which is Lingoda. They're an online language school that offers a lot of flexibility because they are just language classes. Yes, exactly. They're really just focused on connecting you, the student, with a teacher. So bring what other tools you want. And because they use the Sefer system as well, you always know where you are and what kind of things you should be studying. So I find it really flexible to mix with other tools. And if you've watched our Learning German in Germany video, you'll know I love a good in-person intensive course or online course as they've had to be lately. I really love just pushing myself four hours a day, four days a week. However, it's really difficult. I mean, I haven't done that in like two years now, I think. Scheduling that kind of time has not been easy lately. When I first moved to Germany, I made sure to make that a priority. You know, I kind of scheduled a couple months where that was what I was doing. And ever since then, I've never been able to schedule another one because of the time commitment. And that's one of the things that I've really appreciated about Lingoda is because they have teachers all over the world I could take a German class at 10 p.m., something I'd never be able to do just in Munich alone. So that's been really helpful. And not only do they have that kind of global network of teachers, they also let you pick which lesson you take when you want to take it, not just time, but also theme. So they'll give you all the chapters for A2.2 and all the subsections, but if you're in the mood to take one over another, just sign up for that one. And I really like that, specifically because when we came back from Mallorca, I put that to the test. I didn't even realize I was. But I got back from Mallorca, and the first lesson I took was how to talk about your trips, which was a fancy way of saying we're going to teach you past tense and practice prepositions. I'd have never clicked on that title. However, wanting to talk about trips, I was all about it. So I skipped ahead, took that lesson because it was, well, really important for what I was doing right now. It just kind of fit with what I was thinking about and all the German conversations I was having. And so before I started that journey with Lingoda, I kind of felt like my language learning was kind of stagnating because I was having trouble getting the time commitment and finding those live interactive lessons. And so that's really helped me and kind of scrub off some of the rust. And I'm really excited to kind of keep going with it and see how far I can take it. And that leads me to my next point. If you like the idea of these intensives and you like the idea of flexible online lessons, well, do I have something for you? We have partnered with Lingoda, friends of the channel, to provide you with a discount code on their upcoming sprint, which we will be participating in. I would never plug something I didn't believe in and wouldn't be willing to do myself. So check this out. Until the end of January, you're going to be able to sign up for their next sprint. And as you can guess, it's an intensive language learning course. 30 classes in 60 days. Or, for the intense people out there, 60 in 60. And the crazy thing about it is they're willing to kind of make a bit of a wager with you. If you're able to complete the entire sprint, they will give you your money back. 50% off if you do 30, and if you do all 60, they will give you 100% of your money back. The sprint registration day ends February 1st. The classes start on February 11th, so you do have a little bit of time post-registration to get yourself ready. And if you are interested in joining along, please check out the link in the description box below. We've got all of the details laid out for you there so you can join along. I really hope you do. And if you wouldn't mind using the voucher and registration link that we do have, that way they know that you're coming from us. So maybe you'll see some of us in these classes if you sign up for this sprint, especially if you're gonna do sort of the night owl, Munich type, midnight classes like Ben likes doing so much because he's crazy. <laughs> exactly, if you're around like I am, or if you're in America now, that'll make it easy. I might just see you there. So that leads us to our final tool that we've used thus far in our language learning journey, the unavoidable Duolingo. <laughs> the unavoidable owl. I'm just gonna be honest, Duolingo didn't work super well for me. Right. I did the entire language tree. I got the little gold owl at the end to say that I had completed Get everything. I really did, but at the end of it, I really couldn't speak German, and yeah. I would later find out that I wasn't even A1, really. And that's just because, for me, it moves so slowly. It spends a lot of time, yeah. I think, sort of making you translate these awkward sentences that you would never use in real life that don't actually really help you advance in the way that, like, the Sefer sort of guide does, and it's right. not pegged 
to the sufferer level. Right, not pegged at all. So you can complete the whole tree and you don't know where you are. Yeah, so I, I just went through the entire tree, couldn't really speak German afterwards, could only translate awkward sentences like the llamas bring a cake to the boy, you know, which like is a little bit helpful. I think we were talking it's about this nothing. earlier. You know, any language practice is something, you know, right. but it's just, I don't find it, for me, it wasn't super effective when it came to learning German. Yeah. But you recently have been using the Duolingo yes. stories and you quite like it. Yeah, so definitely w disregarding the tree which is a glacial pace. What I really like is the Duolingo stories aspect because I love reading short little stories in a foreign language. Now, there are a lot of books that I've read where they, they're short chapters, they highlight the vocab, well, they make them old, the words that you need to be learning and studying, and they put them in a glossary at the back. So it's a really good way to do a short burst of long form reading because that's something that a lot of other tools miss proper long form, multiple pages of reading. And that's really cool. And adding it into a narrative is really brilliant. And so when I saw that Duolingo was doing that, I really wanted to try it out because it's kind of a big book and I've always got my phone with me. So the idea that I can just pick it up, ignore the tree and go straight into a story, a conversation of actually shockingly good sentences. I mean, you joked about it, that the Duolingo sentences are a bit rough, uh, but the stories, their sentences I thought were quite fun, almost quite colloquial in a way as yeah, well. Yeah, they came off quite natural. I thought I was very surprised when you because I was kind of yeah, judging. them to you. I was like judging it was like why are you doing Duolingo you know my opinion on this and then right. I, I saw you doing the stories and I was like oh like that actually sort of sounds like how I hear right. German speaking German in right. a way they're a ton of fun and they ask you a lot of really good questions when you're doing the separate system and when you want to take a test to actually see how good you are to get a certificate they don't ask you questions about what you just read you know word for word they ask you understanding of the narrative just a, a terrible example off the top of my head is if you're reading a, a letter written by someone who's about to go on vacation, they might say, oh, I'm really excited to see you aren't married next week when I come over to England. And then a bad question is, you know, where are they going on vacation? It's like, well, it says it in the text, England. Like, I can just match that. A better question would be like, where is the, the girl writing the letter right now? Well, if she's going to see her aunt, she's probably at home. And so it's not a great example, but the idea that it's more meta on the narrative. And the Duolingo stories ask you questions like that. So it's really good for just testing that you've really understood it, because if you're mistranslating sentences in your head and you're going all the way down, you're, you can end up being shockingly off when you do long form reading. So I think that is a tool, proper long form, I've really been enjoying. And adding that into Duolingo has been really convenient. So to reiterate on the sprint, please check it out in the link below. We're going to have some information on there. So maybe you can join us this mm -hmm. upcoming February 2022. We're going to try to make it a little bit of a New Year's resolution. See exactly. if we can do some intensive German courses in the way that we did at the beginning of our you know, language journey. Here. Exactly. Like and subscribe and follow along. The next few videos, we're going to be doing updates. How is the sprint when we're actually in it? And after we've finished, we're going to be giving it a proper review to let you know well, what we feel and more specifically to show you what we've learned. We can't wait to do all of that. So stick around. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.